Welcome back. So, thus far, we have uh, been working with, in these last two episodes, a reader app and a writer app. We've looked at replication and persistence with Hypercore, and we've looked at using Core Store to manage multiple Hypercores. In this episode, we're going to look at replication and persistence with an append-only database structure called Hyperbee. So Hyperbee is another of our building blocks that sits atop Hypercore and uses Hypercore underneath, but it provides a key value store on top. Let's take a look. So in the documentation, there's a how-to guide, how to share databases with Hyperbee. It has a uh, downloadable file link there to a file called dict.json. That's a dictionary that's in JSON format that we're going to use to pre-populate our database. It's just a, a bunch of key values that we're going to loop over and uh, add to the B in our writer app. Now, the writer app has been modified since the previous episode once more. We're still using Core Store, but now we've added Hyper B. So I've run npm install Hyper B inside the writer app folder to install that, and then uh, it's been imported. In the previous episode, we used the Core Store library to create three Core Stores. For this, we're using it to just create one and uh, pass that to the Hyper B. But the idea is that this could then be extended with additional functionality. You could have a core store for the Hyper B and then a core store for something, something else like uh, large content files. So let's take a look through this modified index.js of writer app. So a lot of the same stuff. We're only getting one core using store get and with the name of my B core. And then we're setting up uh, the Hyper B. We create a new instance of the Hyper B by passing the core that we've just created with core store as the first argument. And then we're passing some options uh, for the key and value encoding. In this case, we're using UTF-8. After the core's ready, we join the swarm, and then we check the core length. If the core length is uh, zero, then we're going to be uh, importing our dict.json file. Otherwise, we're just going to go straight ahead and uh, do nothing, which means that we're seeding the dictionary because that's already started. The reader app has gone under a similar transition where we're still using core store just for the one core, We've installed Hyper B and we're using Hyper B and passing that store, that core to the Hyper B. So to get the, the core of the writer, rather than passing a name, we pass a key. And that key is provided as an argument, as in the previous episodes. Again, the, the swarm is joined and then we wait for input on SDD in. As input comes in, we're doing a get on the B, which means we're looking up a specific key and then we're outputting the value for that key or otherwise saying not found. Let's try it out. In the writer app, we can run pair dev. And since it's the first time we're running it, it will say importing dictionary and then give it a little moment to connect with the swarm and then a B key is output. We take that B key, copy that, and now we're ready to run our read app with pair dev and passing that key. In the previous episodes, we were writing to the SDDN of the writer app, 
In this one, we're writing to the SDDN of the reader app, and the reader app is taking that key, uh, it's expecting a key, and it's going to query the Hyperb of the writer app, and then output the result. So we need uh, a key to look up in the dictionary. Let's choose one. Uh, so we're going to type in a key uh, that's in the dictionary and see if it gives us back the result. One of the keys in the dictionary happens to be pair, so let's see if that gives us a result. Yeah, as you can see, it's output uh, quite a, a lengthy description of uh, a pear, as in the fruit, the fleshy poem or fruit of a rosaceous tree. But if we put in a key that's not recognized, I'll make up a word like uh, smurgle, and then we say no dictionary entry for smurgle. So now we have a reader app and a writer app that can talk to each other and query for, where well, the reader app can query the writer app uh, for keys that it responds to with values. So we essentially have a key value database completely peer to peer. Before we wrap up, let's stage our app. So I'm going to run pair stage dev with the dry run flag. And it's showing that we have uh, some node modules that have changed. You can see that the dict.json has been added, index.html, uh, index.js has been modified, and uh, so is package.json. Perfect. So now I'm happy with that. I'm going to stage it for real. And then same process again in the reader app, pair stage dev, dry run. All looks good again. And so I'm going to stage it for real. Now I'm going to seed, pair seed dev, the writer app, and then back into the reader app. Whenever it's finished, yep. Pair seed dev, and now we can run the applications from their keys. So I'm going to do pair run with the writer key. And that's going to load. And then it's going to uh, go through the same process of uh, loading the dictionary because it's a, a new storage on a, because it's an application that's been staged rather than a, a locally developed application. And then it's going to, um, Output the B key, yep, here we go. And we're gonna pass that B key to the reader. So we do pair run with the key and pass the B key to the reader. And now we should be able to input. And now we should be able to input, say pair again. And yep, we have our value. So now we have two applications that are running on pair platform remotely from the key. Uh, able to, with one able to query the other for keys and values. Note in this uh, adaptation as a final piece that we're passing just pair config storage to the core store rather than doing a path join pair config storage and another, uh, another path. This is because each time you run an application, pair config storage is dedicated to that application that you're running. So you don't necessarily need to use subpaths, but you can. So it's been swapped around this time just to make that point. Well, that's all for this time. I hope to see you again. Hey, hey, thanks for watching. Pair Runtime Development moves fast. So come chat with us on Keat and share your feedback. There's an invite in the description and on pairs.com. Remember, the future is peer-to-peer -peer and the future is now.